Good morning, guys. Greetings in the name of Jesus Christ. How are you all doing? This morning, we're going to be reading out of 2 Corinthians 6.17, Be ye separate. <laughs> and this, we're doing this as the world remembers 9-11. When the World Trade Centers were hit, our prayers are constantly with the families who've had to deal with that stuff and, for many of them, still dealing with it. The whole verse says, therefore, come out from among them and be separate, says the Lord. Do not touch what is unclean, and I will receive you. Let's read some context here. Let's start in verse 11. Appropriate. O Corinthians, we have spoken openly to you. Our heart is wide open. You are not restricted by us but you are restricted by your own affections. Now in return for it, the same, I speak to his children, you also be open. The temple of the living God. Verse 14, do not be unequally yoked together with unbelievers. That can happen in marriage. That can happen in the workplace. For what fellowship has righteousness with lawlessness? And what communion has light with darkness? Now in a lot of cases, this can be hard. Because right away we'll think, well, I have to work with a bunch of people that are unbelievers. Now, as long as they're doing their part, you're not unequally yoked. It's when you're the one doing all the stuff and they're not. I have some of that in my household currently. So, sometimes you don't have a choice. Sometimes your family is the issue. Sometimes <laughs> we're the issue. What communion has light with darkness? We're not supposed to be hanging out with darkness, but instead stay in the light. Verse 15, and what accord has Christ with a Belial? Or what part has a believer with an unbeliever? Now, we don't have a choice in a lot of cases because of the nature of the world and the nature of society. But in a lot of cases, we do. I don't hang out with very many people. In fact, I can probably count them on one hand. And I really don't hang out much. I stay here at the house. If I go anywhere, it's to go do what I got to do and then come back home. I don't have a desire to hang out in that way, to do those things. What I'd like to do is find a Bible study group. But the only one I knew of around here has since closed. And what agreement has the temple of God with idols, for you are the temple of the living God. We are that living temple of a living God. So we should not have anything to do with idols, and yet every day, people all around the world worship idols and don't even know it. As God has said, I will dwell in them and walk among them. I will be their God, and they shall be my people. Therefore, come out from among them and be separate, says the Lord. Do not touch what is unclean, and I will receive you. I will be a father to you, and you shall be my sons and daughters, says the Lord Almighty. The Christian, while in the world, is not to be of the world. You have to do worldly things for that pertain to life. You have to buy clothes, you have to buy groceries, you have to mow grass, you have to work a job, you have to fix things, you have to get a car and drive it because it's hard to walk anywhere nowadays. Because everything is so separated and far away. But try it in Texas. We don't measure distance in miles. We measure, measure distance in time. So how far away from San Antonio are you? Oh, about 84 miles. <laughs> how far is it from here to Temple? Oh, about four and a half hours. How far is it from here to Corpus? Oh, about two and a half hours. Yeah, we don't measure things in miles here. It's in time. Because it's, it's easier. So we're not supposed to be of the world. We're not supposed to be loving the world. And there's stuff, like I said, there's stuff we have to do in the world. We can't help it. I may not want to do some of these things, but sometimes it's forced upon me against my will. I don't want to hear some of the music they got. In fact, I don't want to hear most of the music they got out there now. But I pull into a gas station and four or five cars have got music blaring. Go to a Bucky's when they're full. You'll have anywhere from four to six cars out there blaring music. 
You can't help but hear that stuff. And they're playing it out loud, not realizing there's children around. So sometimes we can't help it. Sometimes we can't help dealing with unsavory characters as much as we may try to avoid it. Now, the Lord protects us in a lot of these cases. But this is where, on those times where we can't help it, we hang on to what we have. And when we can make the decision to not have anything to do with it, we don't have anything to do with it. To not be of the world. Not to love this world. Sometimes it's a, this isn't a physical act, it's a spiritual one. He should be distinguished from it in the great object of his life. You should be able to identify this person. A lot of people hate this. But people should be able to identify who you are compared to everyone else. To him to live should be Christ. Whether he eats or drinks or whatever he does, he should do all to God's glory. The other people won't. You may lay up treasure, but lay it up in heaven, where neither moth nor rust doth corrupt, where thieves break not through nor steal. You may strive to be rich, but be it your ambition to be rich in faith. See, we're rich. A lot of people look at us and go, you're not rich. You live in a single wide trailer, drive old vehicles. Yeah, I'm still rich, richer than you. How do you figure that? Because you're rich in physical things. I'm rich in spiritual things. The Lord says, I'm gonna, I will make you rich. He's talking about the spiritual things. That's what they miss. He's not talking about physical things. That's where the uh, charismatic movement made their massive mistake. Hold on just a second. Okay, sorry about that. I heard some noise in the other room. Um, yeah, when Jesus is talking about that, the charismatics made that massive mistake. When Jesus is talking about that, you know, uh, making us rich in that, and people take that to being rich here. Now, he's not. He's talking about rich there. And when he's talking about rich here, he means the spiritual things of richness. Rich in faith. Rich in boldness. Rich in truth. Rich in... And holiness rich in faith and good works you may have pleasure but when you are merry sing psalms and make melody in your hearts to the Lord in your spirit as well as in your aim you should differ from the world there should be a difference between us and the people of the world people should be able to tell this difference you should differ from the world. As a true born-again believer, you shouldn't be like everybody else. Even for the most part, what would be called church? What would be called a normal Christian behavior? You should be different than that because you should be doing it the Lord's way. Because there are Christians who will not like you for doing it his way. I know it's happened to me recently, just in the last few years when the, when I was going to this last church I was going to. They didn't like me because I did it his way. They were People got angry. One individual just could not stand me, hated me to high heaven. And he was an elder. What business do you have hating people? People should be able to tell. You should be able to notice. In a group of Christians, people should be able to tell who's who you belong to and who everybody else does. Because there is, as far as I can tell, there is no church that is 100% dedicated to the Lord. No congregation. There's always people in there, wolves, hiding in amongst the sheep. See, when you have a flock of sheep, and the sheep herder calls them, the sheep come running, the wolf will crawl underneath them and will sit there and wait. And the sheep are so focused on the sheep herder, they don't pay attention. But they'll sneak in. Waiting humbly before God, always conscious of his presence, delighting in communion with him, and seeking to know his will. You will prove that you are of heavenly race. Simple things, guys. Simple things. People should be able to tell. 
my people around me can tell. And you should be separate from the world in your actions. And this is a big one for a lot of us. If a thing be right, though you lose by it, it must be done. If it causes you to lose, it's gain for you. If it be wrong, though you would gain by it, you must scorn the sin for your master's sake. A lot of people will say, well, <clears throat> it's okay in this case because it's going to be better for several other people. Well, not if it's illegal, not if it's incorrect, not if it goes against what the Lord says. And there are pastors even who do this. There are pastors that do this. I heard of some recently. Well, not not recently, a few years ago, fairly recently. Had to quit his job before retirement because of a bad business deal. Him and a few others. And yeah, there was a lot of bad stuff that went along with that. A lot of people were very confused because then everything became about money after that. It's weird. You know, we can't be of the world. We have to we have to stop focusing on those things. The Lord will add all that stuff to us as we need it. But we need to be separate. We need to be different. We need to be of of a different caliber than the other people around us. And I can tell you that if you're if you're the Lord's, if you're walking with him, there are people who are not even used without you even saying a word can tell the difference. Can sense it. I've had people who were non-believers and it, and they were admitted confessed non-believers. And were okay with it. They said that's not for me. Tell me after just a few sentences, tell me, I can tell you're a spiritual person. And I had mentioned nothing about the Lord. But the other person I was going to church in the room, he didn't say that to, to them. That's interesting. See, there's a difference between a carnally minded person and a spiritually minded person. That people should be able to notice the difference. You must have no fellowship with the unfruitful works of darkness, but rather reprove them. Walk worthy of your high calling and dignity. Remember, O Christian, that thou art a son of the King of Kings. Therefore, keep thyself unspotted from the world. Now, again, this is going to be hard to do, but we have to try. We have to strive, like Jesus said, strive to enter by the narrow gate. Identify those things and change the situation. Soil not the fingers which are soon to sweep celestial strings. Let not these eyes become the windows of lust, which are soon to see the king in his beauty. Let not those feet be defiled in miry places, which are soon to walk the golden streets. Let not those hearts be filled with pride and bitterness, which are ere long to be filled with heaven and to overflow with ecstatic joy. Then rise my soul and soar away above the thoughtless crowd, above the pleasures of the gay, and not, not homosexuals, but happy, and splendors of the proud, up where eternal beauties bloom and pleasures all divine, where wealth that never can consume and endless glory shine. You're not going to do it perfect. None of us are. But what an amazing thing for us to grow that direction as far as we possibly can before we go to heaven. It changes how we talk here, how we think, how we act, how we interact. It changes how we think towards ourselves, towards others, towards God. It changes how we communicate. Being a born again believer changes everything about us. We're being born again, born again into a new state, a different person. People should be able to tell the difference. I guarantee you, if I met any of my army buddies on, you know, face to face that I hadn't talked to in forever, they could tell. Not because of me, because of Christ in me. 
I can't help but act different. I can't help but carry myself different. I can't help it. Now, what I try not to do is I try not to focus too heavily on trying to be different so that it becomes a charade. I just be the way I know I'm supposed to be to the best of my ability. I don't always succeed. Sometimes I come short, but I'm human. But my goal is to be more like him as much as I can. And the more that I desire that, the more that I strive for that, the more that I move towards that direction. <laughs> the more he blesses me with those attributes through the Holy Spirit. I know there's a lot of people right now listening going, oh, he said strive, that's works. Read the Bible. You tell me what Jesus meant when he said strive to enter by the narrow gate. We can't get away from the truth. We can't get away from what he said. We can't get away from what the reality of this is. And one thing I'm gonna make sure I do and I made this promise to myself and to you guys several years ago. I'm not going to follow after what other people are doing with their ministries. I'm not going to go chase people down and then rebuke them in my weird way of I rebuke you in the name of Jesus, which means nothing and does nothing. That's not a rebuke. Or chase them down and speak nasty to them or about them. Or come against people that we don't like. That serves no purpose and it doesn't glorify God. That's not the purpose of a ministry. A ministry should be to spread the gospel. And so we need to spread the truth. We need to share the truth, the glory of God, encouraging, strengthening, and building each other up as we see the day approaching. That's what I want to do. Because that's what Christ did. He told the truth. He didn't cut anybody any slack. But he gave the full counsel. That's my desire. Give the full counsel. The best of my ability. Because I'm sold on Christ. I'm all in. I desire that. And I want to be changed. And I want to change. So where I fall short, I make sure that the desire is there to meet the expectation, even if I fall short. Because even if I can't do it, the fact that in my heart I want to do it makes the difference. And God knows what's in our hearts. Father, we come before you this morning in the name of Jesus Christ to give you praise, honor, and glory. To lift you up and sing praises unto your holy name. <clears throat> Father, thank you for this holy word and thank you for this devotion. We love these devotions. They have been very eye-opening since we've started them. I thank that you, I'm grateful that you led us to them. I never knew they were here in this app. Yet here they are. Father, we fall short every day. We come up short every day of the expectation. And you know, because we are human, we're in our flesh, we make a mistake. But the difference is, in a born-again believer, is that our hearts aren't set on those things that we make mistakes on, those things that we fall short on. Our hearts are set on you. Our hearts are set on the truth. Our hearts are set on doing right. And even though a person may not be able to do it, their desire may be to do it. They may have a hunger for it and a thirst for doing the right thing, even if physically they struggle. Lord, I think we all struggle physically, but spiritually, it's a different story. Spiritually, we want these things. Spiritually, we want to do these things. Sometimes we're in living situations where we're struggling in every corner. But you give us strength. You empower us. You strengthen us and lift us up to be able to do these things and to be able to, be, to become these people. Now, in some environments, it's really hard to do because we're so surrounded and browbeat up by this stuff. But what an amazing strength when you give us the ability to endure to the end. And what glory comes out of that? What glory comes out of holding the line, even in a situation where all odds are against us? See, the Lord knows our hearts. Lord, you know our hearts. You know what our desires are. You know what we really want to do. You know what is there compared to what we may be doing on the outside. If two people give a gift 
those gifts are two completely different things, even though it's the same gift, because one had it in their heart for one reason and the other had it in their heart for the other reason. <coughs> they had different reasons for doing these things. It's so very unfortunate that we can't do it perfectly. It would be nice if we could. It would be amazing if we could. Some people, they're in great environments that propagate that stuff. You know, we have to stay away from the world and be unspotted from the world. We have to separate ourselves from those things. But some of us just are just in a situation where It's a very big struggle to achieve. Lord, give us strength to achieve these things. Give us strength to be a people set apart, to be peculiar, to be different. Give us the ability. Make us willing and then make us able to be your children in this world, to be light and salt, to be somebody that people can tell is di are different than everyone else. That people may see us, see us acting in a way that goes along with your word and then glorify you because of it. Be thankful to you because we are walking in the way we should. It's a hard walk. It's a struggle. Every one of us, I'm not going to lie, I struggle with it all the time. Lord, I know that you will strengthen us to keep us going. You will give us the ability to do it better and better. Lord, remove us from the spots of this world. Remove us from the things of this world that we may walk in your truth and in your grace and in your mercy in this world. And that even if we can't speak a word, we can live it. And the people around us can see us live it. Make us to do better for your glory, Lord. Thank you, Father, for your mercy and grace. Thank you for your great love. Thank you for your free gift of salvation. In Jesus' name, we bless you, praise you, honor you, and glorify you. And in the mighty name of Jesus Christ, we pray. Amen. Guys, thank you for joining me for morning devotion. It's hard. I'm not going to sit here. I'm not going to try to, you know, sugarcoat it or anything like that. I try to make it like it, it's a challenge easily met. And if you're not meeting it, there's something wrong with you. I'm right here with you. I'm right here falling short just like everyone else. I don't want to fall short, though. I'll tell you what, I'm tired. It's a struggle. I'm tired of fighting the fight. I'm tired. It, it just wore out. But you know, there are some basic principles that you can keep in mind, and you find them in the scriptures. If you know it's a situation that's ungodly, bow out. Say, no, thank you. If you know it's a deal that's being done in an ungodly way, even if it's for gain, don't do it. And they'll tell you, well, what? What's wrong with you? You're, you're not going to lose. You're going to lose everything. No. I'd rather lose and gain than gain and lose. He who gains the whole world loses his own soul. He who loses this life for their Christ's sake will gain it back tenfold in heaven. I mean, we keep those basic principles and live those things and the difference will become evident as to who we are. Every day it's a struggle. Every day it's a fight. It's going to be that way. But if in your heart the desire is there to do it the right thing, to do it the right way, that makes a difference. And the Lord sees that. And we can pray the Lord, pray him that he will give us the ability to walk in the way we should. To be separate from the world, to be unspotted. Sometimes, I mean, he'll change a person's situation <coughs> to get them away from the world. The world is a negative influence. He didn't mind, and, and it's it's been amazing. I see him do it all the time. 
it will take us away from those negative influences and put us around positive ones so that we're not being persuaded to go the other way. Because what does it say? If he didn't shorten the days, even the very elect would be deceived. That's how bad things are going to get. Well, let us constantly remind ourselves and each other of the truth of God's word. That's why you're here. So that we won't be deceived. So that we won't fall short. So that we won't stumble at the last minute. Right at the finish line. I'll tell you what. I'd rather crawl across the finish line on my belly. Than be running and stumble right at the end. Be separate. Be different. Be that person everybody thinks is weird. Because there's somebody in that group that's looking for hope, looking for truth, looking for Christ. And when they see you, they'll realize, I need to go talk to this person. And they'll come to you privately. And they'll ask you. And that's a seed planted when you tell them the truth, the gospel. When they ask why you are the way you are, tell them. Because of Jesus Christ, he's changing me. And be confident. Know and believe what you're saying. That, in and of itself, will have a great effect on them. Okay, this guy isn't questioning what he's saying. He's actually believing it. He's, this is real. When people see you living for him and it's real to you, it'll become real to them. Because what they see is hypocrites. That's why people don't want anything to do with it until they meet somebody who isn't a hypocrite. Then they go, oh, wait, now this, this is different than the other stuff. It's a beautiful thing to be a Christian. In this life, here on this earth, it's painful, it's hard, it's a struggle. But it's a glorious calling. In heaven, it will be something beyond our imagination. I love you all very much. I bless you all in Jesus' name, and I'll see you in the next video.